Good morning and welcome to our worship this fifth Sunday in Eastertide. Though we are still in Eastertide, our Gospel today records Jesus' farewell to his disciples before his crucifixion. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In you, O Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Let Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The reading comes from Acts 7, 55 to 60. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing there on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon him with one accord, and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witness laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, 
so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. The tender compassion of our God the dawn from on high shall break upon us. He will shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The lockdown situation that we are all currently experiencing is, I know, proving to be a challenging experience for some people. It does, of course, present an opportunity to do things or learn things that we would perhaps normally never have the time to do. Well, I'd just like to share with you a self-improvement activity that I have been undertaking for the last six weeks. I've been doing an online course in method acting. It's something I've been interested in doing for some years, but never had the time. And I have to say it has been a transformational, if rather demanding experience. In brief, method acting was a technique created in Russia by Konstantin Stanislavski early in the 20th century. And the technique itself became known as the method. And method techniques prompt actors to draw on their own experiences and emotions as a way to strip their performances of artifice. There is no faking, no indicative performance. The emotions and feelings you see a method acting expressing are real and they are drawn from personal experience. And this requires going deep into their own unconscious and developing a sense memory. They then, through a prolonged and intense process, come to fully identify with their character. It's about deep connection, internalization, and a quest for realism. You get to the essence, the truth of the person and their life. And it's about being present. Even living their life, their feelings, identifying with their beliefs, sometimes even replicating the conditions, the external conditions of the character in order to behave more authentically. There's much use of impulse and improvisation. 
but essentially your primary aim is to become one with the character you are portraying. So you are all wondering, where is this going? Am I suggesting that to achieve a fulfilling Christian life, we should all become method actors? No, of course not. But there is something to learn here spiritually about inwardness and truth. It is true, of course, and it's a somewhat disturbing truth, that we often do indeed put on social masks and knowingly perform to deceive others for all kinds of reasons. But that is not the point I'm going to make here. I'm focusing on the processes of going deep within ourselves, journeying into the depth of life, where we find the truth about ourselves. It's interesting to note that many method actors talk about the work of going deep into their unconscious world as producing a kind of heightened awareness of living and the immediate world around them. Indeed, some actors speak of heightened awareness and use words like transformational and even spiritual to describe things that happen both before and during their performances. Well, this is what happens when you seriously take a journey inwards. And inwardness or the inner journey seems to be at the heart of John's Gospel. And if we look at the reading from chapter 14, we can get a very strong sense that this Gospel is intended to take us deeper into the meaning of Jesus' life. The author of the Gospel was undoubtedly a mystic. And that's an understanding supported by many contemporary theologians. It is a mystical text, calling us to a new consciousness and a new way of relating to the holy. But, and I say this as an aside, mysticism has come in for a good deal of misunderstanding. I'm not talking about some wacky desire to get some sort of spiritual quick fix or inner warm feel-good factor as a substitute for action. That isn't real mystical spirituality at all. Certainly, in a mystical experience, there is often a heightened sense of reality, a sense that something new and extraordinary is being revealed, a sense of oneness with the divine. There may be a feeling that something familiar is suddenly understood with fresh insight. But most importantly, the experience profoundly changes the attitude and outlook on life of the one experiencing it. Now, the disciples, of course, were slowly being changed by Jesus, but they always seem to be slow in understanding his real message. In today's reading, which is one of the so-called farewell discourses, we see Thomas again in questioning mode. When he says to Jesus, we do not know the way, for we do not know where you are going. Jesus responds with those famous words. I am the way, the truth and the life. And he's really saying to Thomas, this journey is not an outward one but an inward one. God is not up there, God is in here. John Shelby Spong, an American theologian and retired Episcopalian bishop, interprets these words of Jesus like this. He says, the only way to take ourselves into the reality of God is to live into the meaning of the Christ life, to discover the freedom to give yourself away. That alone is the pathway to the Father. Well, coming back to the gospel text, there is of course more. Jesus continues, if you know me, 
you will know my father also. From now on, you do know and have seen him. But what Thomas does not really understand is that Jesus is affirming the mystical oneness of the father and the son. To see Jesus is to see the father. They are one. And the disciples have seen Jesus' face. They've heard his voice. And even more importantly, they have seen what he did, his works, his love, his commitment to others. And it should be enough. To know Jesus is to know the Father. But this mystical understanding is something we must now live out. We are to give ourselves away, to pour ourselves into the world. Wherever there is love expressed in healing or reconciling, wherever there is life-giving work happening around us, this is the work of God. And right now, of course, we are seeing plenty of this in the heroic work being undertaken in the fight against COVID-19. And of course, much of this loving service does not necessarily happen in easily visible or even spectacular ways. And it is not just the presence of a chosen few. So the message is simple. Wherever there is life in abundance, then Jesus is present in our midst and we abide in him. So perhaps we should follow the method actor's creed. There is to be no artifice. There is no faking it. No indicative performance. We are called to be present and to fully identify with Jesus, to internalize him, to become one with him and make living into his life real and authentic. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. As Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us gather our thoughts in prayer as we thank God for his goodness. Loving Father, we come together this VE weekend to give deep thanks for the courage and resilience of the wartime generation. We pay tribute to their sacrifice as they defended the freedoms and values which uphold our common life and which we continue to cherish. We honour them and draw strength from their example as we face our own peacetime global crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We hold in mind families and communities living through the coronavirus pandemic. We give thanks for the seeds of generosity springing up across our neighbourhoods. And we pray that this spirit of kindness will lead to a more equitable society once the crisis has passed. Help us all to appreciate silver linings 
wherever they occur during these troubled times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pay tribute to our medical and social care staff working on the front line, often at great personal cost to themselves and their families. We view our essential workers in a new and different light as we come to appreciate those whom society has undervalued in the past. Help us always to see the dignity and humanity in each person and guard us from complacency and self-centeredness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that your healing presence will comfort those who are struggling, those physically separated from loved ones, those who grieve, those who are ill, those who feel anxious and cut off from the world, and those who are fearful of losing their livelihoods. And we especially ask you to safeguard those who are vulnerable and hidden from sight and those placed at increased risk during lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our political leaders faced with the immense responsibility of easing restrictions whilst continuing to protect life and livelihoods. Grant them the wisdom, patience and resolve to act in the interests of the nation and help us to do what we can to act responsibly as we go through these uncharted waters. And as we conclude our prayers, here are some of the consoling words attributed to St. Patrick, who called on Christ's protection in times of quiet and in times of danger. Help us all today to hold on to the peace of Christ within our hearts. Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet, Christ in danger, Christ in hearts of all who love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Colic for Easter Five. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of his eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do his will, working in us that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. And we will conclude our worship with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen.